Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today's gonna be special because we're not gonna see the usual, okay, let's make this look like watercolor tutorial, but rather let's make this look like cutout because MNPRX can do more than just watercolor. So what we're gonna do is we're going to be creating this two different styles here. One is paper cut and the other one is cutout. And we're gonna do this from scratch. So for this purpose, I've bought and downloaded this asset here from Sketchfab. And since we're doing this from scratch, let's begin with it. So first I'm gonna go here to file, import, and then I'm gonna choose the Baby Shark FBX. So this is exactly what I got from Sketchfab. As you can see here, once I open the outliner, this is just a general group. We have a mesh and a skeleton here as well. That's basically it. We also got the textures for it, but we're not gonna use them because we're doing cutout after all. We're doing something that looks like this. With that being said, let's get started. First, I'm gonna choose the skeleton and I'm gonna hide it. So the first thing you'll want to do is to go to style and choose any cutout style. I'm gonna work with this one that you should have. This one will come out later in the July version. You're gonna have also the cutout shark style. So I'm just gonna load this style up. And the first thing that you'll see is that normal materials don't show in the cutout stylization. To facilitate this and view it, you can always toggle here wireframe unshaded. Once we have this here, we can start assigning the cutout material to this object. Now, as you can see, every single bit is connected to one entire mesh that is skinned. And with the previous version of cutout, this would have been very hard to do because you would need to separate each body part and specify you want to have this cut, you don't want to have this cut. And in the July 2020 release, we've made some updates to the cutout that makes this much nicer and much more powerful to use. So let's assign a cutout material. So once we assign a cutout material here, you're gonna see that the cutout appears, which is nice, but you're gonna see that some parts are cut out, some not, so it's kind of strange. And when you select it and click on the material, you're gonna see that there's a foam material that gets selected, but not the cutout material. And this is because this mat tool works very well when you only have one material assigned to the object, but if it has more, it doesn't know which material you want to have. So in this case, it's good to open the hypershade. And then if we remember correctly, select the material. So I choose this, I select the material. This is the shark 2D, this material and this. So as you can see, both materials are selected, but I'm only interested in selecting the objects that have this material assigned and then right click assign material to selection. So this SFX material is the shader FX material that MNPRX uses. So once we have that, we can close the hypershade. And if we select and click on matte, you're going to be selecting the material. Now, just keep in mind though, that when you have the hypershade open, even if it's minimized, if you select the object and click on matte here, sometimes these attributes will not appear. And even if they appear, they won't work. And that is because these attributes outrule the others. So in case you're wondering, it's because the hypershade is most likely open when this doesn't work here. Now you can avoid all of these by using in the toolbox, the bulk attribute tool, but this is not available for every license of MNPRX. So just keep that in mind. This is mostly Indie and Studio that allows you to modify many materials at once. For now, let's keep this simple. We only have one material. The only problem is that now the entire object is cut out. Now, if you notice things flickering a little bit, this is because I have TAA enabled, which I should disable for now. It's always good to edit things without TAA and to just show the final results with TAA. Otherwise, you won't always see the changes that you do right away. So if I select here TAA, let me explain that a little bit better and I select the material and I say uncut, you won't be seeing anything until you move the camera around. That's why it's better to do these things with TAA disabled, so in standard, and then you will see changes right away. So here, as you can see. So we don't want everything to be cut. It's nice, we have a silhouette, but we have no inner details and that's not exactly what we want. So for that, we're gonna use a new tool that's available in the July 2020 version 
that is a cut mask. So a cut mask is just a texture that allows you to define what should be cut and what shouldn't be cut in the cutout style. So once I enable this, you're going to see it all goes down because we have no cutout mask file. Now a cutout mask file, it's very easy. It's just black and white. And we've added one here under presets images. You will find a cutout mask. So this is just one that defines white means cut and black means uncut. So once we open this up, you're going to start seeing in this case some variation. So let's take a look at the UVs. We go to Windows and we go to Modeling Editors, UV Editor. So once we have this here, you're going to see that the UV texture is here and we have a bunch of UV shells. So if we change to UV shell, we have a bunch of UV shells. And these UV shells were already with the asset. In case you don't have UV shells, you would need to create them yourself. But since we already have them, this is perfect for this example. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I know that the right half is white, and the left half is black. So I'm going to disable the view texture here. And then I'm going to define different parts to be different things. So I want to have the silhouette. So the silhouette needs to be cut out. So I select the UV shells. You see them here and I can move them just with W as you would move something in the viewport as well. And I will move them to the right side of the texture to where it's white. And that way this UV shells or whatever polygons uh, are assigned to these UVs will be cut. And we're going to do the same with pretty much the entire outer shell. We want this parts. Yeah, for now I'm just going to do pretty much most of it. So you can do this also bit by bit. I'm just trying to save some time here, but I'm noticing that I'm still gonna have to do certain things bit by bit. So I'm shifting them to these shells to the white part of the texture. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this ones here. So now we have a much better silhouette. Of course, I'm missing some shells as well. So I'm gonna move this one here to the right half. And I'm going to do the same thing with the tail. So for designs to work with cutout, first they need to have a strong silhouette to communicate because there's really no shading information. Once you cut things out is, I mean, unless you were to paint things or things like that, you wouldn't see any shading information about what is being portrayed. So it is very important when working with a cutout that you have very designed characters for it. In this case, the design was simple enough that I thought, okay, you know what? The silhouette is strong. I could probably play with when I assign a texture at a nice cutout effect to it. But this won't be the case with every object in the scene. So just keep that in mind on every character. Not every design works as a cutout. However, the ones that work are pretty cool to work with because you can communicate a lot with just pretty much silhouettes. So let's start here on a shark. Something that's very prominent are here, these parts here. I don't really remember the English word for it yet. But let's just select them and make them not be cut so that we can have a nice contrast. You see these are on this part of the UV and we need to bring them to the left so that it's not cut anymore. And once we have that, we already have a very nice uh, indication that this is actually a shark. What I'm going to do here as well is we have this very nice UV shell that goes around the eye. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this not cut and I'm going to make instead the eye to be cut. So I'm going to select this UV shell and this UV shell and I want to have them cut. Yes. So now I have a very nice eye silhouette. I'm playing basically with negative space here. Something that's also very clear on sharks that should be indicated most of the times are teeth as well. But if you notice, once we see this character from the front, the teeth are lost. From the side, we have some nice teeth, but if we're going to show this character from the front, the teeth are lost. I want to keep them as cut out. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to select the inner part of the mouth and make this instead not cut. So bring the front paper of the cutout to it. So I'm just going to select all of these shells and I'm going to 
shift them to the left. Now again, what I'm doing here is just shifting things around between the cutout masks. So this is a cutout mask. Depending on where I move it, this is gonna be cut. This is gonna be uncut. So I want this part to be uncut. Then of course, this starts to look weird. This entire part, I'm gonna cut it as well, just to see how this looks like. And this is how it looks like. So with cutout, it's a lot about playing with negative spaces. So we have these gills here and we have the eye that's clearly visible. The teeth are starting to be visible from the front. On the side, we have this very nice silhouette of the shark. So it's starting to look a lot like a shark just by using negative spaces, by playing around with negative spaces. So if we look at this here, this is pretty much what we did. Something that I'm realizing is that we also left the mouth cut, in this case, the lips. So let's do this here as well. Open up the UV editor, select the UV shells, and I am going to show them here. There we go. What else did we do here? I was just mostly playing around to create this and that's exactly what I'm doing here. So yeah, that's pretty much how I stylized this character. So from the front, he looks like this. And then once we have him animated, so from a three quarter perspective, it looks very nice. We could also remove the tongue because the tongue doesn't necessarily fit well with a cutout style. It distracts from the character shape in a way of the cutout shape. So we could separate this if we go to mesh, separate, and then we could select this and hide it. That way we have a maybe a nicer silhouette. From the side, the tongue does look very nice. So something interesting would be if whenever you're showing this character from the front, you hide the tongue or animate it differently. And from the side, then you let the tongue out as well. So you can do all sorts of crazy things with cutout. So just keep in mind that design is king for the cutout style to work. So try to keep things simple. Also don't necessarily subdivide characters because while it looks really smooth, it doesn't really look like cutout. Cutout is rough around the edges. Something that I also recommend here is of course you can play with the different substrate colors. So you can have a different color for this paper and a different color for the other paper. But something that I also like to do is to add just a little bit of distortion to it so that it doesn't look like a clean cut so that you see that there's something there apart from a clean cut. And once you add TAA to this, this looks very nice. The cut becomes very subtle. As you can see here, it gives just a nice handmade touch. And then of course you can play with different colors. We have some presets here, but you can go really crazy. Think of all different color combinations. So here you will notice we don't have a cutout, but we have inverted the cutout. So this would be a cutout. The paper in the front is white. The paper in the back is this dark blue. And you can invert this to have like a paper cut animation, not cut out, as if this would be the paper in the front and the background is just the blue of the background. Yeah, this is how I approach cut out. I try to keep it simple with one material and the addition of the cut masks is really cool for when you have more complex designs. And yeah, it allows you to add a lot of indication and to play with silhouettes. So in a way, this is great, for example, for animation to highlight when you want to just communicate with silhouettes. The cutout is the perfect style for it. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. If you want to get to see more tutorials and want us to create more tutorials, please remember to subscribe, share MNPRX, share what you create with it. And yeah, help us spread the word about non-photorealistic rendering, stylized rendering, and being able to control this in real time. Now, before we leave, I wanted to also show you something with cutouts. You can also use paint effects and noise effects on it to define what is cut and what isn't. Now, in this case, it's not really very useful because we can just create these kind of things. I mean, for certain designs, it might be interesting. Now, when, when I move this here, you're going to see that the attribute is moving. So what you could do, for example, is to key this here. Let's say I'm setting up a key. And then at frame 10, you come here and make him disappear. I key this again. And then I have like a procedural disappearing of the character. So let me just key this from here, take this value, place it here, set key. And yes, let's have it like that. 
So now you have this kind of nice transition. You can do things like, I don't know, cut out burning or uh, yeah, just let your your imagination wild and see how you can experiment and play with these attributes to create all sorts of crazy things. That's it. Thanks for watching and see you next week.